Okay, I'm going to call the December 3rd meeting of the Park and Recreation Commission to order. It's 6.35 p.m. Um, so the first thing on our agenda is public forum. No? No. Okay. Um, correspondence. I think I'd like to hang on to the correspondence because it uh, relates to the sign, and that's on our unfinished business. So why don't we just talk about that when we get what to sign? that. The correspondence that we got. It was in the packet. Yeah, but the uh, rowing sign. And, uh, the rowing sign. Yeah. The rowing oh. Okay. Okay. So, can I get a motion to approve the November fifth minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the November fifth minutes. Can we get a second? Second. Okay. Is there any discussion, addition, corrections to the minutes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Can we now get a motion to approve the minutes of the November 13th workshop that we had? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the November 13th workshop. Second. Okay. Any discussion on that? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? <coughs> Okay, the expenditures for November. I really do love the format. Ooh, yeah, we'll just color so <laughs> yeah, and color coded. I mean, just so easy to go through and look at. So. Awesome. so, any questions or comments on the bills? We're all good. Much easier, much easier to read, and I think that really helps us as, yeah, as we go through here, bills. really. Okay, so a motion to accept the bills. I make an approve the motion that we accept the bills. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I just Any have opposed? one question for you, Rick, through the um, portalettes, would they disappear during the wintertime? Are, are we in purple or what color? We are in, in <laughs> what do you want to call that? Violet. That's violet. Yes. Violet. violet. Yes. They all disappear? Yeah. That does make they, sense. They, uh, mm -hmm. other than the, like Mill Pond, we'll, we'll put one there for the right. winter if we have ice skating, and we keep one at the police station basketball courts. But all the rest um, should be gone now. Okay. Do we have one for um, Baldwin for if, in case it snows and we have? One? Uh, we haven't left one there. We haven't. It's a, a thought. Okay. I had to check the weather forecast for that one, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, we never have put one there before. We haven't. Have no. You're talking about for sledding. Yes, yeah, for the sledding, for the right. <laughs> too much apple like cider. But that's like school property. property. <laughs> we don't supervise that don't. either, so I don't know that we should get involved in Baldwin. Okay, that's cool. I mean, it's not, it's not anything that we supervise or take care of, so. Okay. Department reports. Rick, you're up. Uh, just a couple I'll highlight if you have questions. Uh, the, I just want to, the 25th anniversary, thought went very well. I think mo most of you were there. Um, it, we figured about 50 people or so attended, I think, and it was very nice. We got a proclamation uh, that Sean Scanlon brought for the state, and uh, Rosa DeLauro's office brought a proclamation, a federal public proclamation of the 25 years of our service here. Um, and our staff, uh, most of the staff were involved in pulling it all off. They all did an excellent job, I thought. Um, and thank you to uh, Judy and uh, Rose, I think. And who were you two the the subcommittee? I can't remember who else. Yeah. yeah well, and Ellen. Uh, and Ellen, yeah. But I mean, from the commission, yeah. Thank yeah. you for your help with it. Yeah, and Ellen, and I mean Terry and uh, um, Larry. I mean, everybody was involved in one way or another, and they, they, had a they wonderful, did a nice job. Presentation, a nice uh, video going. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. It's fun to yeah. see them. It's fun to see the uh, mm -hmm. old directors and the old <laughs> somebody <laughs> the young directors. So, somebody, I don't know. What do you guys say? Was that your, your is that your son? Yeah. <laughs> well, so, no, that was me. They <laughs> were dragged there basically, but they appreciated that they were there. They thought it was really you know they liked seeing the old pictures and hearing some of the old you know learning learning about the history. So it was, it was thank really you. Fun. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is uh, number 10. Um, so Jacobs Beach, uh, the nor'easter we had, uh, we lost all the mulch in the playground. 
And so we had to re replace all that. So the guys did that last week. We got new playground mulch. Some of the stone dust washed away. We got new stone dust for the, the pathway there. Um, the water didn't come up from the ocean, but it comes across from the marsh. And that's where it came in. And, and, and the playground was under, I was there that day just to see how it was. And I bet you six inches or more of water in the playground and the mulch just got washed away. So we had to uh, replace that. How often does that happen? I mean, not, not every year, but you know, sometimes you get those big uh, full moon high tides. You know, if there's enough wind and stuff, it, it happens. Um, okay. I mean, I can't tell you how often. I mean, I'm going to say but with it's the not two like hurricanes, that happens like once every five years. It's not that rare an occurrence. No, rare no, more often than that, I would more say. Often than that. Yeah. Any of the animals are doing good. How many of them in Germany? They put like a berm up there or something. Would that help, or that just waste the time and effort? I gotta make sure the berm doesn't get washed away yeah, first. Yeah. 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 Well, the, the other thing, it, it, or even if, if we get too. heavy rain, it gets it, if it gets trapped in it, there's no place to go. No, yeah. I, I mean, you have to. We have to look at inland wetlands. We have to. Yeah. Get oh, yeah. To, to do this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a good question, but I, I think that um, no, it's I'm just the environment down there. About it too. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't. Uh, soccer fields over by the far end by the marsh for elite. That gets backwashed with. Um, High tide uh, or lunar tides too. Is that correct? Because I not, not quite as bad. It does, it does come over sometimes. That day the water was like adjacent to the parking lot. The parking lot at mm -hmm. Chittenden was in the water, and the low area between the end of the soccer field. I think that was just for the rain, though. Okay. You know, we had a lot of rain with that nor'easter. But you talking about Chittenden Park? Chittenden, yeah. Yeah, I've been down there like with, uh, you know, like it was wet, but you go on the field and I was like, I couldn't believe how dry it was. Yeah. The field itself. What's that? Drain's yeah, nice. it drains real nice. That has a nice berm to it. Yeah. <laughs> one, one thing, though, that um, because the uh, some people, there are a couple of boats that got lost, uh, that got damaged down there, and that's, that's the owner's responsibility. I, I went and took mine out, knowing the storm was coming. There were a couple other people taking theirs out that day. Um, but the rack that is closest to the water, um, almost most high tides, that bottom rack is getting in the water now or the water's getting to the rack. So we're thinking about at least eliminating that lower rack, if not the whole c corner rack, which would be mm -hmm. 16 boats, I think. And we're, uh, I see some Boy Scout uh, type say, people. Boy Scout project on, on we're looking line. at maybe a, a, another possible Eagle project, building another rack, mm -hmm. kind of where the other ones are, the, the, you know, yeah. the corner there. We have room to put another one or two over there. It does make the kayaks farther away from the water. They're very convenient yeah, where they are yeah. now. But the the water's coming up there. Well, we have to remove the entire rack, or can we just cut it back, or or just we can we can eliminate the, the bottom, top, or just use the top two. Yeah, tiers. we can do that. We could probably do that for now, for, for a few now. years, and maybe we just eliminate the bottom one and then build, you know, in another spot. The downside, as I said, people who have had that bo that bottom rack like for a long is. time, which is very convenient, right. it's not going to be convenient anymore. So the, as long as they had mechanism to affix them to the rack, they shouldn't float lose away. them, right? They shouldn't float away. If, but they may get wet. They would get, they would get wet. But they get wet. They get wet. Anyway. One was full of sand. <laughs> full of sand. <laughs> and it was well, that would yeah, be the and thing. And it becomes yeah. hard to yeah. move. Yeah. That's well, see, saying. what happened when we had the hurricanes, because people didn't, the first hurricane, they didn't move their boats off of there. We lost two and a half racks. Yeah. Because the, the, the buoyancy of the boats lifted, the, the water lifted the racks right up out of the ground. One of them ended up in uh, Nancy Arnold's front yard, yeah, a quarter that. mile away. There was a one and a half racks and one and a half kayaks in her front yard. The other half kayak was wrapped around a tree at the yeah. beach. <laughs> so that's why the next hurricane, when we had the one the, the year or two after with um, Sandy, we, we, we issued a, a directive. directive. They had to get their kayaks out of there, and everybody did for that storm. So we don't. Do we ask them to empty all the racks prior to the winter season so that we they can have go, to? Yes. yes, they have to. So yes. we can go in and do our repairs. And Correct. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. And if they're left over, what happens? They. Uh, there we had an incident where somebody we, we give them two or three notices to remind them when they sign the agreement in the spring they don't have to get them out November first. They're not out. November fifteenth, give them another notice. You know, if not by such and such day, we're going to take them out. So there was one that was still there last week. And we took it out, and the uh, person called us asking where it is. It's out of our garage. And according to the agreement you signed, you got to pay fifty dollars to get it now. He said it cost Fair us enough. to move it, and they they paid it. Fair enough. Okay. Um, 
Okay, the only only thing I would add to the report is is I did go with Rick when we presented the uh, five year capital budget plan to the Board of Selectmen. And we did um, talk extensively about uh, the trash pickup. So there's a little more research we need to do for the selectmen, but they seem to be fairly receptive. They didn't just dismiss this and say, no, this is not a good idea. So fingers crossed this may be a good solution to the, to the problem. So just wanted you all aware of that. Okay. Uh, Anthony's report. Any questions or comment on our park service? Busy guy. Busy guy. I think, you know, you see Petrona's report, which he does a good job every month of illustrating a lot of the other tasks besides field stuff that the guys right. do. Um, you know, the Christmas lights had to go up on the tree, and so they, you know, they have to test them and let me know if we need more bulbs. I order those and brush cutting and... Um, the uh, Ellen's been working with the dog park group. They're, they've ordered a, uh, and we actually have it, it's a little pavilion, gazebo, oh, shelter that's going to go up in the dog park. It came out of the, the grant. Um, so Ellen was working on that with them and uh, um, the uh, woodshop class, Dave Hackett's woodshop class is going to install it for us. Okay. Ellen contacted Dave Hackett. They agreed to do it. Um, but Tony is, uh, we're, we're doing the holes for the foundations. Right. You know, that's all we're doing there. So um, another volunteer effort with the high school kids to help put that up. Good. Okay. All right, the recreation supervisors. Report. Um, so Ellen, if you look at her first bullet there, she's been doing a lot doing to help. You know, here. in the absence, of, we have a full, you know full-time administrative assistant now, but but uh, which is Nancy, but she's still also the receptionist uh, until we we have the interviews uh, this week. So I, I assume it's going to be another couple of weeks probably before that position is filled. So she's been doing a great job of helping do those kinds of administrative tasks um, until we do the transition. And um, I told her this figure by mid-December uh, mid probably to start transitioning those over. Uh, and Nancy's ready now. She's, she actually said to me, if you want, I'll start doing room reservations. I'm ready to do it and um, the payroll. And so we'll, we'll gradually transition that stuff back over to her. And the uh, tree lighting info there, the last one, the Sanders workshop, uh, I know, Claire, you were here. I think we figured about 200, 250 people came. Wow. Easily. Great. And a uh, very great event. Um, you know, all the di different things were set up were, were fun for all the kids and parents that came. And um, I think some were disappointed that the line was going to get off, cut off for Santa. Because at some point you gotta right. say that. But you know, I have to say, a lot of people got through. I mean, yeah, I, I think the most line did. went yeah. really fast. And right. I mean, there were people that went twice. So yeah, and you're getting pictures <laughs> taken. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought they did a great job. There it was, was a very easy cool. flow. Yeah. Um, and lots to choose for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I loved having the um, seniors there with their yeah their sales. Mm -hmm. That was nice. Right. Yeah. And there were a few other vendors there, and, and food and. Um, and the uh, inflatables in the Guilford room were all winter themed. That was yeah. great. It was like a, I think it was a gingerbread house, you know, a bounce house and a. Penguins with the ice caps. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, very appropriate. Good. All right. Any other comments on that report? Okay, moving on to Terry's report. Uh, one thing I will mention is the Coast Guard concert for this Wednesday oh, is, canceled. is canceled. Because uh, they're that. called down to, I believe they're performing at. Uh, uh, President Bush's, Bush's uh, funeral. funeral. Yes. So uh, that's canceled for this Wednesday. That's the email I got. Yeah. And the Rotary lunch is the uh, following Wednesday, the 12th. Uh, it's always uh, 180 to 200 seniors come out for that. The Rotary Club does it for free uh, for the seniors, and uh, it's always a big event. Everyone gets walks out with a big shopping bag full of goodies. Mm -hmm. It's the stocking stuffers, but it's <laughs> it's a lot in it. It's full fun. of stuff. So that's uh, always a fun event. The high school kids come and sing. Yes. Is there still great. time to sign up for these things? The Rotary lunch, yes. Yes. And then our Christmas lunch that uh, our staff put on, yes. which also usually has about 150, 180 people, is on the 14th. It's the 14th. Yeah, that'll be fun. What time is the uh, Rotary lunch start? Uh, we start letting people in about 11.30, I think, and uh, um, it, it's about noon. About noon? Yeah. For what, the Rotary lunch? Yeah. Yeah, it is at noon. Okay. But if you want a seat, you need to come early. In the special entertainment, Terry usually does a pretty interesting song. <laughs> oh, on the 14th? Yeah. Yes. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yes, the 14th. Yeah, she, she and uh, Patty usually yeah. do something. 
they would come, they'd come up with something interesting. <laughs> Okay. Some years we serve at that lunch, the yeah. commission members. Yeah, the 14th would be good. Yeah. The 12th is pretty covered by Rotary. I mean, there's a lot of Rotarians, but the 14th would yeah. probably be great, yeah, if you can come. I usually am there. What time is that one? Is it noon? Yeah. What day is the 14th? It's Friday. on Friday. Usually the big lunches are on Fridays. So no pickleball in that room at that time. Obviously. Just a quick question on the um, on the bus program. October, twice the number of miles of September. Was September that low of a month? As compared to, I guess so. I mean, That's August. Why, or, yeah, like That's a salt tooth. Pretty accurate those things. Um, not sure why. In October, I believe there was there was at least one trip where there were three buses that went out, so that would have okay. elevated it some, but not 10, 11,000 more. But um, um, it looks like September may have been understated. That's the only yeah. reason. I can check with her, but she's usually pretty accurate on those. Maybe just less trips in, uh, in September. Okay. Does it does. The question I would have is, does this include our buses that we let SILs um, use? And if that's the case, that uh, would be yeah. part of the reason. It would. Yeah. 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 So the SILs program, John, is in, in full bloom in October, and they do right. quite a few trips. Right. Okay. And they use our buses. So mm -hmm. I think that's probably the reason why that happens. What's the SILs program? Uh, the, the, what is it? The Schiller Institute for Lifelong Learning. It's for, it's for seniors. <laughs> What can we say? Um, and it's a yearly it's a yearly membership fee of about thirty five dollars a person, and they just pay per events. And they have speakers, they have trips, they have concerts, um, they have a movie night, it, and they basically they have a fall session and a spring session. It's usually educational kind of programs. Yeah. Red small red book. Still programs. Oh yes, it's the shoreline. It's the shoreline thing. It's the shoreline thing, and um, you know they bring speakers in from everywhere. We had wonderful speakers come in from Yale and talk about health. We have some talking about aging. We have pe people who come and talk about you know turkey. They do TED talks. Or, um, there was a great one on baseball. Yeah. And baseball cards. Yeah. So the, they, they run the gamut. They run the gamut, and there's something basically for everybody. It's mostly educational yes. seminars. Really, it's one day event. It's not like a program. It's one day. It's really co-sponsored by, by our department yes. and um, uh, Madison yeah. seniors. Yeah. Okay. Also, yeah, the but the programs are, are all during the day. There's like a dollar for a program. Most something. programs like are a dollar unless you yeah. want to take a trip or you know, yeah. or there's no the lunch very, involved. Or. They're very popular too. Yeah. Oh my God, yes. Oh, no. yeah. They filled the room up. <laughs> some of the events in the guild room, there are 120 people in there. You know, for some of the speakers. Yeah, it's a big program. We use here and we use the library. They've been using the library as well. So it's, it's, it's a good program. Okay, so before we go on to our, our uh, commission and our other reports, um, can we, let's, let's uh, move up our Eagle Scout here. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. No, no. Is he? No, yeah, no, that was not for the Eagle Scout. Oh, okay. Sorry, okay, so he's just, okay, I'm sorry. All right. So you guys are just observing tonight? Yeah, he's, uh, this is my son Sam. Uh, we're in Boy Scout Troop 471, and uh, he's working on communication or um, citizenship in the community. So one okay. of the requirements is to observe a town meeting. Okay, great. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, one of their other sons did the uh, stairs at the uh, to the um, announcers platform at, at the Bender Soccer Field. Oh, yeah. That was Ken, right? Ken. Okay. Yeah. Great. By the way, they they look great. Yeah, don't they? <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah. Yes. I, I have no, I can't take any credit, but we have some good, uh, good uh, construction and uh, carpentry in, the, uh, in our troops, so turned out really well. No, uh, Ken Wilson and the rest of the people who go up there, they, yeah, they look great. I mean, the front instead of, yes, right, through yeah, go, walking through the dark woods, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, standing fields. Standing fields. Uh, the last meeting was this past Monday, and I unfortunately was out of town. I could not attend. Uh, but what we have to offer here right now is a couple of things. Uh, number one, the, the John Hess I had put together with, uh, along with Rick, as the next draft of the um, 
Athletic field and use policy. Can we, can we hold on to that until we get to unfinished business field use policy and fees? Okay, sure. Um, but sure. then I'll have to defer to uh, you attended the last meeting. Yeah. I, I, I cannot, okay. I have nothing to say because I don't have, I wasn't there. I was okay, out of state. We'll, we'll, we'll hold that off until we get I to there. I can just tell you that, that basically the main thing is the, uh, the turf okay. situation, which is, uh, I think, on the agenda too, but it's, it's in mediation. Uh, it's next. Wednesday the 12th in Hartford. It's basically mostly mm -hmm. lawyers getting together and trying to hash it out. Okay, fingers crossed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Green Committee? Uh, no meeting this past month. Land acquisition? No meeting. meeting. Anything new with technology? No, not at the moment. Yeah. December's a slow month, guys. We're good here. <laughs> Community center improvements. Well, we have the punch list from from uh, Todd of how things are going. Yeah, you know, the roof, we're trying to wrap that up. Uh, Todd's been good about sending emails out to the contractor. Uh, there, there is a punch list of a couple items left to be done. So um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Is it hazardous to the building not to have them done? Or, I mean, no. No, no, like no. gaping holes or anything. No, no, not at all. Okay. Uh, one of them is just some of the gutters they have to just refasten a little bit. And um, okay. there's a downspot that we're, it's, a, it's an add-on that we're asking them to replace. Uh, we're we're going to pay extra for that because it wasn't part of the project. It's the one that's on the, by the loading dock um, where the ramp is and the water kind of, it, it, it runs on the outside of the downspout and then it, it gets onto the ramp and that freezes up and it's, mm -hmm. it's very, very dangerous. That's where Meals on Wheels people come in. It, to uh, get the meals, you know, in the winter, it's very treacherous. So Todd's like pouring <laughs> uh, salt on that thing, that you know, to try to uh, melt it. So we're going to have him replace that downspout. It wasn't part of the project. It's, it's a, a an add-on. Um, the ceiling tiles, I, you know, I'm not going to go through this entire report, but I'll just tell you the ceiling tiles uh, before the 25th anniversary, um, Todd replaced a lot of them. We we, the, a lot of them that he had replaced were these kind, and the tiles in there have the, the ridges in them. They're, they're like acoustical tiles. You can't get those anymore. So I, I had him take them out of the Quantipog room, and he put the white ones in there, and he made it, did it so a pattern so it looks like they're almost supposed to be there. And, and he replaced the ones in the Guilford room with those so they looked alike. There are a few, a handful still in the Guilford room. They're just very difficult to replace. So those he didn't, but there's no holes. I mean, all the ones that were missing gaps were all filled in. <clears throat> so he uh, he got that all done. Should we put this on a project to complete to replace all of them? It's in, in our room? budget for next year. It is on our budget yeah, for next if year if we get it. But that's that's Not one of these. All the rooms, but the oh, oh no, the, in the Guilford room. Yeah, in the Guilford room. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But they're also they talked about looking at maybe putting a different type of ceiling right. in there as well. So I think we need to do our research. We need to do a lot of work before we just go in there and replace what's there. We have a guy coming in this week to look at that with us. Good. Yeah. Because we're going to have, I think we're going to have to make some changes. Otherwise, in a couple of years, we're going to be back where we, we right. are now with, you know, ceiling tiles falling down. And, and, uh, right. So, okay. Uh, how's our splash pad coming? Um, it's kind of at a standstill still. Um, last month, we talked about having um, the town engineer help us with that. Mm -hmm. She's willing to help us, but is short staffed, so we're not sure how much she can help at this point. Um, Rick was just at a conference up in Boston and met with someone from Weston and Sampson. Uh, yeah, Sampson? He, they're from Boston. My conference was in, in, oh. uh, in, at the Mohegan Sun, but okay. he's from Weston and Sampson, which is near Boston. Um, and they specialize in this, and they were. Um, he was talking to Rick about the different types to put in, the different kinds of grounds that what would work and whatnot. And he, Rick told him about Jacobs and our problems down there with it being clay, with the water, the sand, everything. Um, so he's willing to come down and do site work or s observe the sites mm -hmm. um, for free. Wow. Even though Rick did mention that we would have to go out to bid right. for the company that we end up using. Um, and he was fine with that. So if you Great. guys are on board with that, we can touch base with them and have him come down and meet with the subcommittee and check out the sites, which we would look at Chittenden, Jacobs. Are we still looking at Bittner? 
I guess so, we, we might as well. I guess I'm on the spot. Just yeah. there's no water. It would have to be a well right. or a big giant holding tank or something. So the three that we would still look at. It has parking. Right. Mm -hmm. But we just, I mean, Jacob's in the end really is the most ideal it's for. Just rare at Jacob's. Right. For our purposes of keeping it um, watched or whatever you want to say, um, and then also profiting from it would be Jacob's. If we do it at Chittenden and Bittner, it's really out of our hands and it's kind of more of a free for all um, and a nice thing that well, the town offers. Well, it would offers. be the harder supervision. We'd yeah. have to almost hire somebody to supervise this because. Right. So if you guys are all for it, then we will go ahead and touch base with them and we'll have the subcommittee meet with this company to help us out and then we can obviously pass all this information on whatever we get from them to our, our town engineer so that she can take a look at that and see if she agrees with what's being said. That wouldn't preclude him from bidding if he chose no. to bid in the future or some future? No. I don't think so. I, th I think he... Um, He's with an engineering firm, and basically, that's what they, I mean, they do all kinds of things. One of the things he does is he designs these splash pads and writes the specs for building them and everything. And so, I, as Claire mentioned, I went to the seminar on that, and then I sat with him for at a breakfast for half an hour, just kind of picking his brain a little bit and telling him about our sites and pros and cons. And, and uh, then I called him uh, last week, and uh, he said he'd be willing to come down at no cost. It's a... I wouldn't call it a feasibility study, but at least look at, meet with the committee, maybe look at two or three sites and say, well, you know, here's, you're probably better off here or, you know, don't even think about here or whatever. And at least it gives us some direction. So, um, for free. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, you know. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> that was what so if, if you all agree, I'll call them oh, and no, set I think, that up. You know, we, we trust awesome. this, we put the subcommittee together and trust them to do the work. So I say let them, let them do the work. Okay, unfinished business. Jacob's Beach sod. Is it sodded finally? No, tomorrow. No. Well, tomorrow, uh, A and W is going to go and uh, dig out the sand. Um, some of the loam was delivered today. The rest is being delivered tomorrow, and we're getting the sod tomorrow. So um, we have to sod. Um, I ordered enough for other areas. We, we're doing some work at uh, uh, Leet. A couple of the goal areas we're sodding there. You guys cut that out today, which I'm surprised you're able to do it because it was pretty pretty wet, but they were able to cut out what they had to cut out. And so um, they'll sod that tomorrow. And if Jacobs is ready, they'll sod that. If not, the sod will be okay overnight, and we'll do it on Wednesday. So okay. that'll be, be done, done hopefully, in a couple days. Done. All right. This golf course, how are we doing? We're doing great. Um, the first nine holes have been tagged for tree removal, and I think they're all, I believe, all past the 10-day deadline now so that and, and Kevin hasn't had any um, any concern about it uh, so um, in our uh, designer Craig Smolin has been out chipping away at it he's uh, taken small trees down on two of the fairways nice. Todd and I went out one Saturday and we in an hour we did one fairway and I showed that to what we did to uh, Craig and he said oh yeah it's done <laughs> and all we did is take down a few trees like this you know it were, I mean a couple I, I tried throwing the yeah, disc yeah, and it kept hitting trees and bouncing around. So I said, there's something wrong with this fairway. There are trees in the way. But he did it and he threw it right past the trees and said, no, this is perfect. This is what we want, <laughs> the challenge. So um, he's been going out on his lunch breaks, uh, Craig has, and um, we, we, he's setting up a work day on Saturday, uh, December 15th. Um, I think I might have mentioned that the Coast Guard is willing to help us out. Right. So I'm going to get in touch with them. Uh, one of the Boy Scout troops, 472. Uh, wants to take it on as a project to help. Um, and there are nine residents who had contacted me who want to help build it. So I'm going to email all of them and let them know that the 15th, any commission members want to come? Um, uh, the 15th, December 15th. Yeah, hopefully weather's good, you know, if it's pouring out. Um, he's, he's playing on 9 to 4. I mean, I don't expect everyone to stay all, all day long, but, you know, anybody came in for an hour or two hours would be a big help. So part of what will happen, like what the scout troop will do, is trees that have already been taken down, um, we've we got to move the brush. Right, just move the brush. Um, and one of the requirements we have from DEEP and the planning and zoning is we have to scout the area for any of the uh, box um, eastern box turtles. I think this time of year they probably aren't out anyway, probably. 
um, but we have to kind of walk the area before we do anything and make sure there aren't any there. And if there are, we have to report it, you know, carefully move them out of the way and report it. That was part but of we, the whole. We're not removing the brush, though. We're just putting it off we're, to the we're, side. Yeah, I'm going to stockpile it, like, just on the edges. Oh, yeah. Right, we're, we're not taking it out. Are we going to trip any of it? Or? No, not, not at this point. Um, and I'll tell you, I mean, what he's taken down is not a lot. So, to, I mean, I was imagining piles, you know, eight feet tall, but there's, there's not a lot. They like the obstacles. Yeah. Roof replacement. Can I talk about that? Yeah, I think we know with that. We did. I was just going to say, we've, we've sort Punch of alluded list. to that before. Uh, and mm -hmm. the synthetic turf damage, you sort of... Yeah, it's in media. It will be in media mediation next week. Okay. Um, which brings us to the field use policy and fees. Mm -hmm. So, we have... What you have in front of you is a... Edited... Is the fourth version. Policy. Um... John Hess, who is the, um, the who has authored most of the um, what's the word I'm looking for um, document? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, most of, most of the document uh, has come from his um, research and through his 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 skills of um, getting it down to a manageable level. Um, he has a little bit of a concern, the fact that, and it's rightfully so, is that the has a full subcommission, and it's in the in the, uh, the memo to he or email they sent to us, that we have not been able to ever get all of our parties together to, at one time because of the various schedules that we all keep to come to one conclusion. So essentially what we've done is that this is still, I hate to use the word work in progress, but it is a work in progress. And I, I think the reason why we're bringing this to you right now is that it gives you, we have timetables. We, we have the, uh, our budget coming up um, for implementation in July 1st. Uh, so I think the, the implementation of any fee schedule changes should come in, in, in coincidence with our implementation of the new budget. Uh, that's number one. So we're not as if the, it has to be done today. Um, the second thing is, is that um, John still feels that there is a desire to have the fields rented at a rate that is commensurate with um, market values. And market values, uh, uh, he's compared to other towns, mostly down in Fairfield County and with the other for-profit organizations, and they're significantly higher than what, um, well, both Tara and I feel would be comfortable to impose upon the sports organizations that are currently using the fields. Um, the increase would be um, burdensome, uh, I guess is a, a simple word, onerous, I mean, I could go on, but it, it would be a problem. I think that we may be the jeopardizing uh, some of the organizations that are using our fields right now to not come back um, at a later time and, and try to find um, other places to play their games. Um, it's not as if that we are trying to use this as a money management, uh, uh, or we're not trying to make money, on the, to make money on the fields. And, and Rick had conferred with um, Matt Hoey uh, last week, and Matt's, um, uh, Matt's idea is, 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 in, is in concert with ours, is that we want people to use the fields, with money we generate from the field use, it is for us to use for maintenance and for other improvements, but it's not to be used as a means of generating income for the town. Okay, so uh, we have that uh, information coming from the uh, Board of Selectmen and from our first selectmen. Uh, so if you take a look in here, we had, uh, we had compromised on the field dollars. We, uh, the original proposal that came from John Hess was, uh, through his research, was uh, approximately $100 an hour. And again, we felt that that was just too much. So uh, Rick's compromise that he had come up with and where he had done the calculations was $40 an hour. Even so, with that, there's going to be an increase on the use of the fields by the, uh, by the teams. Um, but I think this is going to be something that's on a more manageable level. And at the same time, we have, I think, the ability to, as a commission, to step these fees into, uh, into use. So that it doesn't, always, it doesn't have to go into $40 all at once, that we can 
we can we can bring it to like uh, like we do with the uh, pavilion usage. You know, we over the years we've we've been having smaller increments in order to make sure that it's not a burden on people who have been using the uh, the other parts of our um, what, infrastructure. So what was it? If we're looking right now at um, basically thirty dollars or forty dollars an hour. Correct. What was it before, Rick? Well, I, I know it, it's in it my was, policy book, but was, I know it was written differently because it was per use. Instead oh, that's of right. It was per use, use instead of per hour. Direct. That's right. Right. So that's we right. changed the methodology with regard exactly. to the pricing. So uh, with re changing but, it from a per use to a per hour but, basis. But I guess my question is for for some of the events that we have, some of the clinics, some of the camps, are they going to see a massive increase in what they're paying from say last year to this year if we adapt this? No, I think the clinics and camps that are by local youth sports organizations are going to be a slight increase. Um, it's similar. It, it was um, hundred dollars. Double, I guess, is what I'm No, no, no. It was before. What was it before it was a hundred dollars for the first five uses. Right. A use was yeah. two hours. Right. So it was twenty dollars an hour, basically, is what it was, which it still is okay. for those groups. So, right. so that hasn't really changed. Um, what has changed is um, um, the private or for profit. Right, right. And there are two groups that really that one is Rush, which Ed Green is here. One is Rush. The other is Sting, the Sting tournament. Those I think have been looked at in a similar way. They're both not uh, um, Guilford Youth Organization running it. Um, there, you know, somebody makes money on it. Um, and so those were looked at a little bit differently, but um, the the adults, the adult teams that play now, I think the way I figured out, they're paying the non-resident men's soccer team is paying like 300 now, it go to 400 with right. the new so rate. So it's not a big huge difference. Increases. No, right. the, an increase it's enough to help to help maintain the fields right. with their usage. Yeah, I mean that's what the the payment would be. I would think absolutely. You know, one of the things though, that we would we would still like to do before this goes into final implementation is that in the past Rick has met with the sports groups that are going to be affected by this so that we can give them a an anticipated cost change as to where they are now and then where it's going to be in the, in the future. And I think in fairness to the people who use the fields that we should give them that information prior to just a blanket uh, in, implementation. Um, we, we still are under the belief that we would still like to solicit information from the board as to what they feel is, uh, if they feel there's anything that they want to change with regard to this. Because as I say, this is still a working document. This is still a work in progress. Um, we've, uh, John has given it his best effort. We've modified it to where we think that it needs to be modified. Um, it's not finally ready for implementation because we have not met with the sports groups. And there are still um, a couple of uh, um, passages in here that need to be um, uh, organized, I mean not organized, uh, discussed further. Uh, one of them is with, with regard to what, can, what percentage of an organization continue, uh, is considered a Guilford versus a non-Guilford uh, program. What is the percentage of participation of the, uh, the people that are using or who are members of that organization and what bracket do they fall in with regard to the fees that are going to be charged to them. So um, at one point, the, the, the scale has gone for anywhere from 60% um, Guilford residents to 80% Guilford residents. So that's still a flexible number that, again, if you folks have your own version as what you feel is a more agreeable percentage, uh, the one thing you'll find about the, the soccer uh, youth programs is that uh, the rush program draws from the entire shoreline. I mean, there's no question about the fact that the, it, it originally started as a Guilford program with, uh, as an alternative to the soccer club of Guilford, but as their success grew, so did the number of people who wanted to join the program also joined from, from out of towns as well. Uh, the men's program uh, is a little bit more of a uh, challenge simply because of the fact that uh, we only have so many people here, men in town, who wish to play soccer. Um, and it's based upon age as well. Um, you have an over 30 team which no longer uh, participates. It's generally an over 40 or an over 50 league. 
and the women's league that was based here in town, uh, the women's league team that was based here in town, they have since folded. And um, I don't think they have any anticipation of reorganizing um, anytime in the near future. So, uh, which leaves the, the, the rush program and also leaves the sting program. The sting program is a one weekend a year uh, where they use six fields, two, four, that six. That's the softball program where they will use six fields right. for a weekend tournament. Um, and they bring uh, teams from, from New York. Um, last year they had uh, one from Vermont uh, and Massachusetts was, and, and Rhode Island. They all participated. <laughs> and this is something that they put on their website all the way as early as now in order to attract teams to come to their program. And they already published their fee schedule as to what's going to cost to be um, to enter into the, um, the tournament. So. So that was going to be my one of my questions now is yes. um, let's let's see. My question is, when do we foresee this actually going into motion? Into implementation. Implementation. I would say the the drop dead deadline that we would have to put this for final drafting would be no later than our March meeting. That would give us time to meet with the sports organizations. That would give us time to. I, I would like to see us vote on it on our March meeting as to a final draft that we would turn over to the, um, for our own So even internal if we program. vote on this in March, it would not take, are we planning on having it take effect immediately? I think um, it, it couldn't because all the groups because would have set their fees. Have set mm -hmm. their, yeah. so, so basically for this coming season, this coming spring season, spring yes. season, I think we have to go with the, we existing have to go with the existing right. old policy. Yeah. Okay. So now, Basically, you've given this to us base as information. We're not going. We're not going to act on well, it. Can I can I modify or, or suggest a couple of things? Yeah. Or add on to what John. The, so the field committee pretty much approved this last Monday night okay. to come to us, um, with the understanding that we we have to agree to something we're going to bring to the sports groups. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm going to suggest we should vote on this as a draft. You know that we can move forward with the sports groups, and whenever we set up meet in January, February, whenever we can meet with with you know representatives of those groups, it may stay. We, we everyone may say, hey, look, that's great, let's go with it, or it might be pushed back, and the commission might say, look, let's let's modify something. Uh, that way, at least the end users get some input on it, uh, or you might not change anything. Um, but I think that we need to approve um, at some point. We need to approve something to go forward with. So to present I, them one. Right. Mm -hmm. I would suggest, my, I'm just suggesting that, that the commission mm -hmm. approve this as a draft, not a final thing, that we can then present to the, uh, the different groups, meet with them, and then come up with a, the, the final, final, final. Because we've been working on this for, what, six yeah, or eight months, well. Tara? And yeah. Um, and one thing I, I just want to mention, on page four, the field committee added this. Uh, I think it's page four. Yeah, the bottom disciplinary action for field policy violations. Mm -hmm. As a committee, we, we didn't come up with a, a dollar amount. They suggested $100 for first infraction, $200 for second infraction. So that's if some, we're asking all the groups or representatives from all the groups to sign to say, yes, we read the policy. Uh, and if they don't abide by it, for example, if they're not allowed to do work on the fields and they're working on the fields, yes. they're, not, they're violating the policy. Or if they're playing in the pouring rain and the policy says no, you know, play in the rain, then they're violating the policy. We and they can be fined for it. We, we may have to just add a little bit more in here with regard to what the standards are, with regard to not playing on the fields. I mean, it's right. understood right now that if it's raining, you don't play. Uh, but we, uh, we have, at least with soccer, the, the, the concept of something called the squish test, that if you walk on the field and you get standing water coming over the tops of your shoes, uh, or anywhere near your shoes, then the field is not playable. And if somebody decides to play on that field and they incur damage on it, the minimum fee will be 100 maybe $200. But it may be in excess of that if we have to pay extra money to repair the field uh, from the damages that um, have, has occurred. Uh, the same thing with regard to baseball and softball. Um, you know, in the past, it's a bright, sunny day. You have teams there. You want to scrape the mud off the field. Well, you, you just can't do it because you're running the risk of um, uh, if somebody gets hurt, where does the, the, the chain of evidence go back to the liability of who's, who's involved with it? Yeah. And we gave some pretty good detail on that. There is some detail. 
detail about that. There, there's some detail in it, but it, it, upon I, I just think it needs to be, you know, in my opinion, just, you know, just reinforce it to make sure it's... But, and that was pretty much written up by Tony. He wrote that part of the policy, you know, the inclement weather right. policy. Okay. Another thing I wanted to point out in last month, it was just an error in putting it together, but there was a question right. about the priority classification. Yes, the group. We see, yeah, we see the page is back. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the first page, yeah. and it's there, there. So that should yeah. help start off the read yeah. Yeah, a little more clearly. Helped. Definitely. Okay, so basically you're asking us to approve this as a draft. Correct. All right. So they can to bring to the... To bring to the, uh, to the sports board groups board. for further discussion. And then it will come back to us as a final, as eventually. A final. Well, well the, yeah, it'll come back. Well, we can, have one, we can have one, one, one more um, uh, opportunity to discuss what the sports groups gave back to us. Yes. And then come back to, I mean, we're, uh, and then say approve or, or disapprove. I mean, and then it's our decision as to how we want to manage right. uh, um, the policy. Right. So can we get a motion? I will make a motion to accept the athletic field use and allocation policy draft four um, to be presented to the athletic groups. I'll second that motion. Okay. Any more discussion on this? Anything, Rose, again, I think it's good that John, and, and that we brought up this letter from John Hess oh, because yeah, we want to make sure that he did have some concerns about it. We want to make sure the commission understood that. Absolutely. That um, he's a member of the committee and he thought the fee wasn't high enough, but we wanted to make sure that his opinion was made known to everybody, not just the subcommittee. Right. And he also feels that this is substantially incomplete, so let's see what happens. Well, in, in, in defense of that, the, the original version was like, what, what 13 pages yes, long? Yes, yes. So that we, we've condensed this. Condensed yes. yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Okay. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Thank you for the Yes, thank you, Tara, for uh, all the work that went into that. You guys have been working on this since the beginning of summer. Yeah. It's a glacier, but we, we're making yeah. sure we do it right. That's the thing. Okay, the office trailer for the parking, for our parks garage. So I guess the planning and zoning meeting is Wednesday, Wednesday night. Okay. We submitted the application, and um, we put it in the exact footprint that they've already approved for the, for the truck wash station, because that's already been gone through the um, variance and everything, or ZBA, I guess. And um, so it's in, in that same footprint. So um, I, I've been told by staff there in the planning and zoning office that, that um, it should be okay because it's, it's already in the footprint of something they've already approved and less invasive than a truck wash station. It's a trailer. So, so hopefully they approve that Wednesday and then we'll have to go to... Um, and then it's got, we got to find one. No. Go to Board of Selectmen to approve the, the lease of it because it's going to be... We're going to lease it. You know, over the $7,500 uh, cost. Um, and um, and hopefully we can get this in. So we're hoping by what the end of Jan beginning say, of January. Yeah, hopefully by mid January. Mid January. Yeah. Because uh, I think at least one of the companies said they can get it within a week or so uh, to us uh, when it, if we order it from them. So at least we're seeing some movement. Movement, yeah. and we're seeing that there is something at the end of this rainbow here. Hopefully. And I recall this is full utilities. Um, yeah. It should have water. They will have to be pumping out the, the uh, septic regularly because it will be a holding tank. But it will have a bathroom. It will have a place to wash hands, a place where they can eat without the chemicals mm -hmm. right next to them and the smells and the Would it have lockers dirt. for them, too? Or uh, there'll be a, uh, there, there, well, there will be a, 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 room, a space where they could put lockers in, I suppose. That, yeah. I mean, otherwise, there are lockers in the garage. Right. Okay. You know, but if they want to just change out of wet clothes where we can just bring them in there and do that, I guess. But it will, it will certainly be a lot nicer than, than yeah. what they had to deal with. So. It, it's going to go a long way to helping the guys out. I mean, not they have bad morale, they don't, but you've seen the conditions they're in down there, and this yeah. is going to be so much better for them. Just to have a bathroom, I think it's great. Okay. Um, the capital budget, oh, I already sort of told you how that went. Anything else, Rick, to well, add they, about the capital was, budget? Was there any discussion about anything to be removed from the budget from the Board of Selectmen, or is that the... Um, there was no discussion about removing anything, but there was a little, a, dis, um, a suggestion that, what is it, the, um, 
come on. No, the. Uh, <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> Judy's looking at me with um, daggers. <laughs> you get a nerve. Irrigation, the irrigation that we we look to um, we see if help. Little League would yeah, help us out a little bit with mm -hmm. the irrigation but, uh, and maybe use some of the money that we get from fields used to put towards the irrigation. For where? So the projects that we had identified that we had submitted, they did not. Not yet, no. Not, not taking anything out yet. Not yet. We haven't heard back. Yeah, it's going to take a while, but. Right. You know, we, 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 we've justified, really, I think we justified well what we needed. I mean, the ceiling downstairs really is, is, mm -hmm. is almost a danger because those, sometimes if somebody hits them, they will dangle there yeah. for a while. So, I mean, that really has to be fixed because if that falls on somebody's head, right. it's not going to be no, pleasant. So, so, so some of these things are absolutely necessary for safety. Why are people hitting the tiles? The kids basketball. play basketball down there. Oh, you're you're talking about in the the gym or, or the yes. big room. Yes, that's the, oh, that's okay. where the ceiling tiles okay. really have to be replaced. So that's that, that was the big sense. budget item, and then the truck for the trash was the other sort right. of big budget. Future Yukon stars, Judy. <laughs> oh, and the uh, the uh, boilers. Wannabes. That was a pretty big item. And the boilers, but the, yeah. again, those are things that you know a 27 year, year old, old boiler in a building that is an emergency shelter just right. doesn't seem right. <laughs> So, I mean, it's time to replace these things, not only for energy efficiency, but if, you know, we get another hurricane and we get something in the winter and we're at the emergency shelter, we have to keep these people warm. We can't just say, sorry, our boilers aren't working. And one thing, one thing so, you mentioned is that was important. that feasibility study that, yes. or not feasibility, um, facility study that they gave us money to have done, and that's one of the things they said in the next, when they said the study in the next three years or so, we should replace those boilers. Yeah. So we're, we're following the advice that we were given when, with the money we spent. I think the selectmen saw that what we were putting in there were things that really were important. We're not looking to just do things frivolously because we want them to look pretty. We're doing things because they, they need to be done. They really need to be done. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the rowing sign at the bathhouse, we did that brings us back to the correspondence we got and the dimensions will be 16 inches high, four feet long. The letters will be about 10 inches big, and the sign will say, Home of Guilford Rowing. So they sort of answered all our questions yeah. My only quite question nicely. on it is, I can't, signs in Guilford, don't they have to go through some committee to follow text or font and uh, all I that? I can check with planning and zoning. I'm not sure on that. Um, we'll look into that. Okay. I thought that was only in the historic district. Okay. This is not the historic Design district. review committee, maybe. Maybe yeah, I, well, yeah, that's a, I think the commercial signs. signs. It's not exactly but a commercial sign. Oh. Well, I didn't know if it had to yes. follow no, whatever No, but I think it's worth finding out before there. we do it. You don't want, you know, script up there when we have a block. So. Yeah, I'll check it. So if that is fine with everyone, can we approve this now so that uh, Rick can just get the answer to your question and, and yeah. move it along? It's fine by me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Can you get a motion? Or I absolutely need a motion to do this. I'll make a motion to approve the Guilford rowing team sign at Lake Quinnipog. Second. Okay, any more discussion on that? Okay, all in favor? Yep. Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right, the um, Eagle Scout project, our Eagle Scout was not able to be here tonight, so he will be on next month's agenda. Um, we also need to look at uh, the room use policy. So bring your notebooks because it's in the notebooks and we're probably going to have to tweak that a little bit. So please bring that with you next month. Um, and also we have to have officer elections <coughs> next month. Yay! And uh, have what next month? Office election, officer elections. For what? You mean for you. Like this? Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Judy, are you stepping up? No. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Do Rick? Do we need to set a date for uh, for our, the budget to a budget meeting for our regular budget? Do we? Can we do this in January? I mean, uh, when is the, the budget has to be in by before December Christmas? 21st. I still haven't gotten anything yet. Really? I've been chipping away at it, but um, well, last um, year you got it pretty late too. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, you know, probably next week. Um, it's going to be very hard to get us all together at some point to do this, to be honest with you. I mean, what, I, what I'll do is, is w once I get all the information and I get it 
fairly done. Uh, I can even talk to you, Rosie, if you want to try to get a meeting, or, or I could at least send it to everybody if anybody has comments, because we're going to be getting around Christmas time. It's good. I know it's hard to get everybody together. Um, but we, again, usually it's around like December 21st, 22nd that we have to have it in. So, I, you know, I've been chipping away on things that I can do, but there's certain information I have to get um, from uh, different departments before I can finalize things. But um, Yeah, one year they only gave us like three days to mm -hmm. turn around and remember that. Yeah, I don't know exactly, but it's been tight. Yeah. <laughs> I think the capital budget one time was, was about three really or four tight. days. Yeah. But yeah, they, well, it makes it hard to get us all together to go through this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, yeah, we'll work, I'm yeah. chipping away where I can. I will be, our family will go on the way on the 21st. So, not that I used to have a call. Yeah, Skype. <laughs> I'll be in a plane. Sure, sure. We'll just Skype you right into the mirror. We're going to uh, very, very, very far away. Is there any? Is there any? Uh, any other business? I, I just have one quick question. Sure. I'm sorry, I should have brought this up sooner. But um, the the Guilford High School weight room. Is there a light at the end of the tunnel for this one yet? The, I'll keep asking. I um, I haven't got an answer on that yet. I am going. I should have mentioned December next Monday. I've been asked to come to um, a meeting of the Board of Ed subcommittee about the Cox Field, about getting that turned over to us. Awesome. While I'm there, I think I'll ask the two other questions. One was the um, the weight room, and what was there was another one. What was the third item that I talked to Dr. Freeman about? <laughs> I forgot what it is now, but but definitely that that's one thing I have in my mind. That I don't know if it's the same committee, but I think I'll, I'll you know we need to know that because if it's if we're responsible still next year, then we got to have the utilities in our budget. Right. If not, it transfers out of our right. budget. When we started talking about the budget, I, that's what, what triggered me about this because this originally is a one budget, soon to be off budget, but when is it going to go off budget? That's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other business? Any other questions? No. Oh, good. Can we get a motion to adjourn? I no. make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Yeah. I'll second. Okay. All right, all in favor. Rose, what you say you want to bring that to The binder. The binder. Oh, I have a question about that. Now that the year is almost over.